okay in this part of our lecture we will discuss about the anatomy of leaf so anatomy is the study of the internal structure of an organ as we all know that leaf is an important beneficial mean to surface photosynthetic organ of a plant like stem and root leaves also have three types of uh, tissue system that is dermal round and vascular the dermal tissue system consists of an upper and lower epidermis the ground tissue system that lies between the epidermal layer of the leaf is known as mesophyll tissue and it is all always differentiated into uh, two type uh, first is palisade parenchyma on the axial means upper surface and spongy parenchyma on the evaxial mean lower side while vascular tissue consists of complex tissue of xylem and phloem so let's discuss these tissue in detail okay uh, regarding upper epidermis it is the uppermost layer or adaxial layer of a dike of leaf it is um, a single layer and tissue made up of a cubical cells and arranged closely with no intercellular space in between them chloroplasts cannot be seen in these uh, cells its outer surface is covered by the thin cuticle the cuticle present on the upper epidermis is comparatively more thicker than the lower epidermis which prevent the loss of water through the surface of the leaf on the upper epidermis less number of spermatozoa are present when compared to the lower epidermis in dicot leaf presence of less number of spermatozoa on the upper surface is an actually adaptation to reduce the loss of water and through transpiration okay and mesophyll is a brown tissue present in between the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis it consists of uh, two types of tissue palisade parenchyma and spongy parenchyma you can see in the picture palisade parenchyma is present just below the upper epidermis and this tissue is present in one or two layers the cells of palisade parenchyma are very much elongated in nature the cells are closely packed in each layer with narrow intercellular space in between them the cells of this layer <coughs> internally include more number of chloroplast as a result chlorophyll pigment will also more and due to this the upper surface of dicot leaves are mostly darker green in color as compared to the lower surface you can also see the abaxal and adaxal color of leaf in the lower right picture okay uh, in between the palisade parenchyma and lower epidermis spongy parenchyma is present the cells of spongy uh, parenchyma are small in size and irregular in shape the cells of spongy parenchyma are loosely arranged with a lot of large intercellular space in between them the cells of spongy parenchyma are with less number of chloroplast and have less quantity of chlorophyll and due to this the lower surface of the dicot leaf will be less green in color when compared to the upper surface as mesophyll tissue that is both palisade parenchyma and spongy parenchyma include chloroplast as well as chlorophyll these are concerned with food preparing process called photosynthesis okay and uh, vascular abdomen represent the midrib and veins of a leaf each uh, vascular bundle consists of xylem and phloem complex tissue surrounded by a bundle sheath okay uh, xylem tissue of a vascular bundle is present towards the upper epidermis of the leaf it consists of xylem tracheates xylem vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers uh, xylem in a vascular uh, bundle is concerned with the transport of water and mineral Oh, okay regarding a uh, phloem tissue it's present toward the lower epidermal surface of the leaf phloem tissue is made up of a c cube c pores companion cells phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers phloem tissue in a leaf is concerned with the transport of food material mm, both xylem and phloem are covered on its uh, outer surface by bundle sheath layers 
it is made up of single layer thin wall parenchymatic cells the cells in the ventral sheets contain chloroplast and hence this layer is also concerned with photosynthesis and vascular bundle help in transport of water mineral and food in the leaf vascular bundle also provide a strength to the leaf Okay, uh, below the spongy parenchyma, a single layer of epidermis is present. This layer is actually present on the abaxal, mean lower surface of the leaf. The cells are cubical in shape and are arranged very closely. Without any intercellular space, many strata are present on the lower surface of the leaf in comparison to the upper surface of the leaf. Okay. These spermatas open during daytime, which allow exchange of gases through diffusion and the escape of water vapor. Just above the spermata on the lower surface of epidermal air cavity, or which we also call as substomatal chamber, is present. This air cavity acts as a storehouse of carbon dioxide or water vapor till they diffuse. Okay, uh, stromata are pores found in the epidermis of the leaf and stem and are participating in the exchange of water and gases. The guard cells are responsible for the opening and closing of stromata. As we all know that air containing oxygen and carbon dioxide enters the plant through stromata and is used in respiration and uh, photosynthesis. The water vapor is released into the atmosphere uh, through these uh, tiny pores. In a process called transpiration strength. Remember, desert plants open their stomata during nighttime to prevent the water loss. Okay, the main difference between the stomata of monopods and dipod plants is that the guard cells of the monopod are double shaped. Uh, you can also see in the picture, whereas the guard cells of the dipod plants are kidney bean shaped. Okay, and this figure shows the transverse section of uh, dipod and monopod leaf. So let's discuss the differences of dipod and monopod in detail. Okay, the main characteristic features that differentiate a monopod and dipod leaf is that the guard cells of stromata are kidney shape in dipod leaf and dumbbell shape in the monopod leaf. The orientation of dipod leaf is dorsiventral while that of monopod leaf is isobilateral. Dorsi ventral organ is one that has two surfaces differing from each other in appearance and structure. Isobilateral orientation in which upper and lower surfaces are identical to each other. The upper surface of the dipod leaf is dark green while the lower surface is light green in color. On the other hand, the upper and lower surface of monopod leaf are equally green the vascular bundle is large in dicot leaf, whereas in monocot leaf, both small and large vascular bundles are present. In a dicot leaf, stomata are usually present on the lower surface of the leaf, a condition referred to as hypostomatic. On the other hand, the leaves of monocot plants have stomata on both surfaces of the leaf and a condition referred to as a epistomatic. Okay, the other difference is the intercellular space of dipod plants leaves are relatively large due to the presence of loosely packed and azotic cells, while in monocot plant leaves the intercellular space are relatively small due to the compact arrangement of mesophyll cells. The bundle sheet of dipod plants leaves generally has a single layer and formed of a colorless cell. On the other hand, the bundle sheet of monocot plants may have a single or double layer and form a color cells due to the presence of chloroplast. The mesophyll of a dipod leaf is differentiated into two parts, the lower spongy mesophyll and the upper palatine. While the mesophyll of a monocot plant leaf has no such differentiation. The venation pattern in dipod plants is reticulate. Veins are interconnected like a web network. The, in contrast, the venation pattern of monocot plants Leaf is parallel, the shape of dipod plants is broader and relatively smaller, whereas monocot plant leaf is slender and long in shape. Okay, and uh, let's talk about the modified leaves. In many plants, uh, leaves get modified to perform some special functions. 
other than the normal ones such as photosynthesis and transpiration. Sometimes uh, these modifications are in response to certain environmental conditions. Whole leaves or a part of leaves are often modified for special functions. These functions are for climbing and substrate attachment, storage, protection against radiation or climatic conditions and for reproduction purpose. Okay, tendrils are the modified form of leaf. In this case, a leaf or a part of leaf gets modified into green thread-like structure called tendrils. You can see in the picture, which help in climbing around the other plant for support. Example are grafts and speed pea. The other form of modified leaf is a leaf spine. In this case, a leaf of certain plants become wholly or partially modified for defensive purpose into sharp pointed structure known as spine. Uh, example in case of prickly pear, the minute leaves of axillary bud are modified into spine. You can see the spine picture in the lower right. The other type of modified leaf is scale leaves. In uh, scale leaves, a small modified leaf resembling a scale, especially colorless, thin, dry, stalkless, membranous structure. Their function is to protect the axillary buds. Sometimes scale leaves are thick and fleshy, as in onion, and then their function is to store uh, water and food. The other type of modified leaf is storage leaves, uh, plants of xerophytic habitats and the members of family Chrysalisia generally have highly thickened and succulent leaves with water storage tissues. Uh, this kind of adaptation helps plants to conserve a very limited supply of water and resist desiccation, means uh, drying up. Okay, uh, leaf feature is the other modified uh, form of leaf. Uh, this is a device you can see in the picture to catch the insect for fulfilling the deficiency of nitrogen in the medium where the plant is growing. Uh, in case of nephron, a leaf lamina is modified into feature-like structure called leaf feature. The other modified form of leaf is a polyid. The petiole or any part of the wreck is become flattened or wings uh, taking the shape of leaf. Uh, known as phylloid, uh, for example, in case of acacia, the petiole is expanded uh, to form a leaf like structure. You can see in the lower right picture. Okay, uh, some leaves are modified for reproduction. Uh, typically, leaves are limited growth, they grow, they function, and then die without sustaining new growth. Leaves modified for reproduction form tiny plants at the edge of their leaves. These leaves become new individual when they are shed from the parent leaf, for example, Kalanchu. Kalanchu is actually the succulent flowering plant. Students, and this is all about the leaf morphology, its anatomy and different types. If you have any question, uh, we will discuss it in our question answer session. Thank you.